Okay, short version of the story is, I didn't get out for a walk last weekend, I'm working this weekend, I've got today off, the car's out of action, I really should be dealing with that, but I'm sorry, I need a walk. So, Friday morning, a bit overcast, nice and cool, a bit breezy, good walking weather. I'm uh, I'm going to follow a bit of a a bit of an ancient trackway, a small part of an ancient trackway, in a bit of a circular walk around the back of my town, Dunstable. Uh, that over there, by the way, it might look like might look like some kind of a a burial mound. It's not. It's a reservoir. It's a man-made reservoir. Uh, I've already walked a mile and a half uphill along the streets, along the back of town, to get to this point. I'm at Mentmore. Uh, used to come here with Twinkle a bit. Well, very often, actually. And uh, I've not seen the spring in a little while. So let's go and have a little look at Mentmore Spring, see how it looks uh, in October. And then, it's also mushroom season, so I'm thinking of popping up through around the woods and uh, it's over in that field there that I saw the fairy ring champignons. Loads and loads of uh, little fairy rings over there. So I'll pop over and have a look there. I'll walk through the woods and then I'm going to follow the path. This is where we sort of join the ancient pathway I want to go along. Which takes in a few, well, all of the ancient sites along that stretch. Along the top of the downs, through the five knolls. And down the green, the green lanes to uh, Maidenbower the old causeway enclosure. Now that to me is a nice big circular walk. So uh, no driving today. It's all on foot. All very wet and marshy, but uh, no actual flow going on yet. No doubt that's gonna come later into the winter and the wet season. Although it's not like this summer hasn't been a wet season anyway. See if there might just be a little bit of a trickle down the bottom here. No, it dry as a bone at the moment. Although you can see where it comes through under this apple tree. Just starting to get a bit of a, a bit of autumn colour on the trees. Look, lots of yellow appearing in amongst the green. Here's the first fairy ring I've come across. Uh, no sign of any, no sign of any mushrooms. Looks much the same as it did last time I was here. They're supposed to, uh, they're supposed to fruit from spring till autumn. smell cider. All these apples they're clearly fermenting because it smells like scrumpy. Right so I'm just making my way up through through the woods to the footpath that skirts the edge of Kensworth Quarry and heads towards the top of Dunstable Downs. Once I'm at the top of this steep hill, I'll, uh, I'll have a quick sit down and get my map out and just show you, uh, show you like the remnants that you can still see on there of this really ancient trackway that we're going to be following through various points of interest. Oh, those are looking good, aren't they? Right, I'm going to sit over there. Somebody's upset at my presence. Oh, it's a robin.
very shouty little robin. Hiding behind that leaf. Oh, he's gone. Right then, so here's Dunstable with the old Roman Watling Street passing right through the middle of it, straight as a die. And this one here coming across in the other direction, east to west, is, is the old Icknield Way. Now, this Roman Watling Street was straightened out, um, and it, it was based on a, uh, an existing windier, more ancient track that came round this way, along the top of the hills. This Roman route goes through the valley that the town sits in at the bottom. The old route used to come up here from Lynch Hill, through, no sorry here, up here from Lynch Hill through Kensworth. And along through Kensworth, along the quarry, along the top of the downs where you've got the five knolls, and then it will pass down into town, sorry we've got the two map situation, it's all a bit annoying. Then it passes down to the back of town where you've got Maiden Bower. Now where's it gone? There we go. There's Maiden Bower. So all of these ancient sites were taken in by this ancient route. And we're just going to follow a little bit of it. Right, that's pretty much the worst of the climbing done now. And I've had a little sit down. So uh, I think when we get to the top of Dunstable Downs, although it's the touristy bit, it is a Friday morning. Um, and it's a bit overcast and all that, so it's probably quite quiet. I might stop there and have a little cup of tea at the visitor's centre. Uh, right, I'm ready to move on now. That's much better. Little sit down, show you on the map what this little route's all about. And uh, we're not actually going to be walking the bit that goes through Kensworth. That's going off south in the opposite direction. We're going to be joining it and headed sort of north-east. But uh, where it passes through Kensworth, one of the farmer's fields uh, behind the high street, sort of behind the common, one of the farmer's fields there was found to be uh, the site of a, a Saxon battleground. I don't know exactly what was found there, but people still do a bit of field comb in there now. People go over there and find all sorts of funny little bits and pieces. You might just be able to make out the sound of machinery. In that direction. That's Kensworth Quarry. You can't see much of it from the footpath because there's a there's a hedgerow that runs along the fence so you can't really see in but there, there are little bits here and there where you can get a look down there and if you have a look on google maps that quarry is enormous it's nothing like Houghton Pit or Sundon Pit because it's still fully in, in use there's no there's no wildlife or nature going on down there yet but there will be one day one day it will catch up with its uh, with its neighbouring quarries who are now both um, sites of special scientific interest. Uh, let's pop up to the footpath actually because the hedge is looking quite sparse there. Might be able to get a look inside the quarry. Now I've had to um, hoik myself up into a tree to be able to get you a shot. Just let the camera adjust to all that chalk. Whoa, slippy. There you go. It's enormous down there. Whacking great big quarry. Now if that one day is left to uh, turn into a nature reserve, like the others all seem to, that'll be a decent sight. But look at the amount of chalk they're pulling out. It is enormous. Absolutely huge. And there's some of the machinery, look, just to um, give you a sense of scale. Right, now the ancient track that I was referring to would have run along the other side of the quarry there, or possibly even straight through the hill that used to be the quarry. Um, but anyway, we're going to be joining up with it over in that direction. For now, let's have a little walk along the edge of the quarry. 
and uh, I've not seen much in the way of mushrooms yet, you know. I was hoping what with the wet weather and the fact that it's autumn, we might see a few interesting ones. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Now when I say ancient pathway, I really do mean ancient. Um, I mean, fair enough, that, that Roman Watling Street that passes straight through the middle of town. And by the way, the town came about because Watling Street was there. Henry I founded it long after the Romans. Sorry, I just remembered it's slowberry season, isn't it? Um, yeah, uh, 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 Watling Street. When the Romans put Watling Street straight through the valley that later became Dunstable, um, they, they, they disregarded the... They were, they were basically following this ancient track uh, on its way down towards uh, St Albans direction. But uh, when it came up here and it passed over the top of the hill, over the top of the hills and through all these little settlements and burial mounds and various ancient sites, the Romans had no need for that. They didn't really need to be getting from little settlement to little settlement. They just wanted to cut a path through. So uh, the original track sort of became a... If you look at the map now, you can see remnants of it in the footpaths and the, the roads of Kensworth. And uh, through the existing footpaths and green lanes that come down off the top of the downs, down to Maidenbower. And as for putting a date on that track, well, it's anybody's guess really. Um, there are plenty of Neolithic and Mesolithic finds and sites along the way, but who knows how long it was being used before then. Probably back to when the very first settlers came after the last ice age. I've never noticed this before, but these these woods out the back of Mentmore. If you look down there, there's a, a, a steep drop, a little terrace. And if I turn around and look behind me, I'm standing on a terrace now. See, it's all very terraced and earthworked. And there's another clear one up there. I've never noticed it before. It appears to be earthworked. I mean, who knows of what age? could have been anything at any time but yeah noteworthy I've seen something interesting walking through this little plantation I think it is a commercial plantation by the looks of it can you see the trees behind me that have got the orange crosses marked on them they're the ones that are earmarked for chopping down. Um, now what I've noticed is that all of these ones which are marked are dead pine trees. They're large dead pine trees. And everything, and they've all been marked with the orange crosses. They're the ones with the ivy growing up them. Now all the other stuff that you can see that isn't dead and has got lots of nice green growth on it and isn't covered in ivy, they're all young birch and young beech. So it looks like sort of successional harvesting. It looks as though at some point in the past they've let the, the pine trees grow, they've let them die in situ. Now maybe the reason they're still standing when they're dead and they weren't cut down while they were still living, maybe they're just taking advantage of the fact that nature's going to dry them out for them if they just leave them a standing dead wood. They've now been marked with the orange crosses, they'll come and chop them down soon and then all of the, uh, the beech and the birch that you can see will take over. That's what it looks like anyway. Might be right. Still no actual mushrooms, but look at the side of the pathway here. You've got mycelial growths forcing their way out of the soil from under the leaf litter. So there is growth going on down there. I wonder what they'll pop out to be. As you can see, they've already started up this end, so that's what they're doing. They're working their way along the top here. And those ones we saw back there, they'll be getting felled quite soon. Wow. This is somewhere I didn't know existed. It's very small and it's recent. It's called the Kensworth Quarry Nature Reserve. The process has already started, look. This is the very northern tip of the quarry. Behind the trees there, that's where the, the actual quarrying is still going on. 
I'm not going to go and explore this today. I, I wasn't expecting to find this, but I'll be back. This is obviously the oldest already out of use northern end of the quarry, and they've been planting it. It's been designated as a nature reserve. Can you see down there they've put in a few pioneer trees, protected them from the deer. This will be interesting to watch, see how this little site develops. And I guess, as other parts of the quarry fall out of use, they'll join in the game. I'm getting right hungry now. I, uh, I think I might even have lunch. I think I might even have lunch at the top of the downs actually. Looks like we're coming up to uh, some sort of junction here. What's going on? Oh, a little glade. Where are we then? Oh, we're on the golf course. We're on the Dunstable Downs golf course. I thought it looked very manicured. Right, okay. So, I'm, well, I'm going to presume the footpath just goes straight through here. Sod them if it doesn't. Oh, they must get a bit of water come flying down here, look. Off the top of the golf course, channeling it all the way down there. Right, back into the woods. I can smell the autumn. It's lovely. All of this leaf litter, all damp and composting. And that was the sound of autumn as well. Crows. I'll have to go out for some uh, go out for some dusk walks if I get the opportunity. Maybe next Monday or Tuesday. That might be nice. That quarry just goes on and on and on, look. That all seems to be out of use over in that direction, but look at it, it's been dug out over the years, it's never ending. I'd like to think what archaeology has been lost. Kestrel. Right, and now we've met up with Isle of Wight Lane which is very likely to have been part of that ancient trackway because it's a private road and it's generally gated off but if you were able to continue further down there it is the direct continuation of Kensworth High Street uh, Common Road I think it's actually called, it's not called the High Street but it is effectively the High Street it joins up directly with this, now the traffic route takes you other directions because it's closed off but if you follow the traje trajectory of that ancient pathway, it does indeed come through here. Right, that just over there is where I'm going to get some food. I wonder if I'll get a beer. Here we are, top of the downs. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. And we've got a, uh, we've got a couple of various different posts and markers around here. I know one of them is an old drover's post. Which one's this? This one is... oh it looks like a... yeah it's a memorial. Okay it's a World War One memorial which must mean there's one... there's one over there by the entrance to the car park. I think that must be the drover's mark. Uh, luckily we'll be passing that on the way to my uh, refreshment stop Heckle and Jekyll sitting on the fence off they go can't even see the beacon today look no sign of it normally we'd be staring straight at the beacon let me see if I can just about pick it up in the mist if I zoom in. You can nearly see it there.
There's some mushrooms. Although, I've got a feeling they might well be the type that are illegal to pick. There is definitely a drover's marker around here somewhere, but this one isn't it. This one's a triangulation point. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it in today's weather. But on a clear day, you'd actually be able to see Tottenham Castle's triangulation point off in the distance there. No beer. And the tea comes in a paper cup. Oh well. I'll keep me going. Well, the mist's lifted a little bit. I'm refreshed. Oh, that thing there, by the way, that monolithy looking thing. It's, um, it's made out of steel. And what it is, it's a wind catcher. Because there's always a breeze coming in on the side of the hill here, it catches the wind and it, it tunnels it under the ground here. And it's used to power the, um, the air conditioning in there. The air conditioning doesn't run on any electricity. It's all powered by this wind catcher. Nice little idea. Right, last little leg now then. And it's, it's downhill all the way. We've got a little flat bit along the top here, along the top of the downs. And then we're going to follow the ancient track. It's going to take us by the five burial mounds. Well, they're known as the five knolls. There's actually seven or eight of them. But only five of them are visible bell barrows, round barrows, you know. Uh, then we follow the track down to the edge of town and through the green lanes down to Maidenbower, where we'll finish up. So it's all quite nice and easy from now on. It's definitely all a lot busier than I expected on a Friday morning, on an overcast day. But it's not too bad. Oh, big fairy ring. Look at that. Any fruit in bodies? No. Somewhere down the bottom, along here, there was the remains of some Roman baths where there was once a spring. And I've always wondered if it's that funny little bit down there. I'm not 100% sure. It's within the grounds of the glider club, the gliding club. But it's a very funny little feature. I wonder if it's where, where the baths used to be. Might not be. Because there were also... Roman remains found at the bottom of Pascom Hill. We're just about to come over the top of Pascom Hill. This is where they used to do the orange rolling. This is Pascom Hill just here. They used to do the orange rolling here. It's a seriously steep hill. They banned it. It was banned Oh, I don't know. At a get, I think it might have been in the 1960s they banned it. If you don't know what orange rolling is, you basically the, the entire population of a slightly backward town all gather at the top of a really steep hill. In other parts of the country they use cheese. Uh, it's oranges here for some reason. And then they hurl crates and crates full of oranges down the side of a very steep hill and the entire town goes throwing themselves after these oranges at great risk great risk to life and limb uh, I'm not sure there were ever any actual fatalities but plenty of broken and dislocated bones but it's funny, they I keep reading that they banned it in the 60s but I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure I remember coming orange rolling when I was a kid which would have been, I'm guessing, probably early to mid 1980s. Can't remember exactly where it was. I don't know. That can't be a false memory, surely. Chris, do you remember that? If you're watching, tell me in the comments, Chris. Do you remember us coming orange rolling when we were kids? I wonder if it might have been a watered down version. Maybe it was on a gentler slope. Maybe it was back over there towards the cafe or something. Or it's all a lot gentler. 
they might have revived it for a year or two. Uh, now the Roman, the Roman ruins that were down there at the bottom of Pascom Hill. I don't know what they were. I'm not sure anybody knows exactly what they were, but they were obliterated um, when this little this little coombe down here was used as a, a firing range. Um, in the First World War, they started hurling missiles into it. So um, any traces of Roman archaeology that were there are now gone. Not for an orange. Now this particular little area of lumps and bumps, I've never ever found any references to exactly what they are. I mean, you've got bits like this which would appear to be very small old chalk pits where people have been digging out chalk and flint over thousands of years. But then look, this lot here, it's, uh, it's all a bit on the linear side, isn't it? Are they cultivation terraces or... I mean, surely if you were digging out chalk and flint, you wouldn't need to dig these long, these long sort of uh, ditches. Not sure what these are all about. Look at all this. Very distinctive, but very strange. I'd love to know. We're just coming up to the to the burial mounds. You can just make them out up there. Somewhere between me and the burial mounds. Where I'm walking at the moment, actually, that just gets quite deep there. I'm going to make my way up this bit. Somewhere between where I am now and those burial mounds, uh, they, they dug up a big slaughter pit. Um, I can't remember how many bodies it was. 50 bodies or something? But they all had their hands tied behind their backs. And their throats cut. And their skulls bludgeoned. So it looks as though that slaughter pit was the result of a, a failed raid, quite possibly. Somebody came and oh, somebody came and thought they'd have a pop at the, uh, the residents who lived up here on the top of the downs, and they came off worse for it. See that there? I'd put that down to being a big area of chalk excavation but I wish I knew okay mounds coming up in more recent times there was a, a gallows up here as well uh, so people used to get used to get hung up here for their crimes and they, they individual individual shallow graves have been dug up all over the place and they're thought to be you know many of them are thought to be the victims of, uh, of the gallows. Right, let's go. They're right there, look. Let's go up through here. These burial mounds, they they range from Neolithic right through to Bronze Age, possibly even Iron Age. So they really do cover a very wide period in history. Got something here, what does this say? Five knolls. This group of round burrows was erected for the burial of the dead over 4,000 years ago in the late Neolithic or early Bronze Age. It is protected by the Ancient Monuments Act. Please do not damage it. What you mean by carving these footpaths through it? He says walking on that very footpath. There we go. I'm standing on top of one. And then we've got two three, four, five. 
They have excavated a couple of them. And I think one of them was found to have a, a woman and a child in it, so... She must have been some kind of queen or priestess or something. Somebody important. With a child, which is interesting. An infant. Right, now the ancient track I'm following, it comes through here, through the burial mounds, and then it goes down the hill, and follows along down there, oh sorry, not down there, along down there. Let's just make our way over the top of the hill. I think that might be another one, just on the edge of the hill there, look. I've never come across any reference to there being one there. It looks likely. Right, we're coming up to town now. You can see the houses are creeping in. Now whether the ancient track came down this footpath here, or the parallel road, which is just the other side of those hedges, uh, I don't know. But, either way, they both follow the, follow the same basic route. So that's it, very much back in civilization now. Uh, now you can see that line of treetops there. That's where the green lane continues, the ancient trackway. So it would have come down either the footpath I've just taken or down that road, Whipsnade Road. Or is it Downs Road? No, it's Whipsnade Road. And it continues over the roundabout there, behind those parked cars, that's where the green lanes start. And they'll, uh, they'll take us down to, well, probably actually the most significant of all the ancient sites. Uh, I won't go on too much about it, because it needs a whole video of its own one day. I'm just going to make one very, very quick little detour. Oh, that'll oil me hip nicely. Nearly there. <coughs> I bet metal detector in along these these green lanes could turn up a few interesting coins and bits and pieces. Hello, hello. You can just see, or you should be able to. That there is just sort of what's left of the bottom edge of um, Hunger Hill, which all got quarried away and became Tottenham Quarry, Tottenham Pit. And you'll see when we get to Maiden Bower, this, uh, I don't know, what is it, 5,000 year old supposedly causeway enclosure, you'll see how perilously close that came to being quarried away. Okay, now I'm getting tired. I'm very nearly home though. That was a nice thing about this walk, it was just a nice big circular walk. Beacons over there. And we've just come from... Right, where are we? There we go. There's the Downs, we just walked down there from, can I get the cafe, there we go, there's the cafe up the top. Walked all the way down there and along the lanes. And now, we're just approaching Maiden Bower. Right, so that ancient trackway has brought us all the way down off the hills onto this little plateau, sort of between Dunstable and Tottenham. Now I'm standing on top of a, a bank with a ditch next to it and this bank is all wooded. This bank goes all the way around there in a huge circle. And let me just uh, get through these nettles into the, into the enclosure.
Right, so now we're standing within Maidenbower Causeway enclosure. It's massive. It's absolutely huge. Where you can see this line of trees all the way around is where the bank is. And it's called a causeway enclosure because on top of that bank, all the way around the top, there was like a wooden walkway, uh, a, wall, a wooden causeway. It's been geophysed. There was a, a geo, geophysical survey done, like you see them doing on Time Team, and they discovered that in the middle of the, uh, the enclosure there's the remains of a Roman temple as well. Well, what's suspected to be a Roman temple? Uh, quite a small square building. That's what they've put it down to be. Um, now just over just over the other side over there you've got Tottenham Castle and then the other side of Tottenham Castle there's a Roman villa. So uh, it's not really that surprising that the Romans were doing something here as well. But the, uh, I think, I'm not going to say too much because, like I said, it needs a video of its own really. But I think under the causeway enclosure, which is the remains, the lumps and bumps that you can see at the moment, there's something even older. And they didn't become aware of that until they started quarrying away this edge of it over here. Uh, we'll go over there and have a quick look. That little section there, it drops off very sharply down the cliffs and into Tottenham Quarry. I'll tell you what, I'm getting so knackered I don't think I can even be bothered to walk over and show you the drop. But there you go, it was when they started quarrying away at that edge of it. You can see around the rest, you've got our very clear bank with trees on it. You get to this little bit here and it all gets a bit sparser where it started getting quarried away. That's when they looked up at the cliff and saw the, uh, saw the trenches of a, a much earlier settlement, even earlier than Maidenbower itself. There are legends and stories and all sorts, but like I said, this is just a walk today. Just a quick walk and I've very nearly had enough. What's this here? Look, somebody's burnt out a motorbike, as is the tradition. Now from here, there's another bike down there, look. Very popular pastime in these parts. Off in that direction, the ancient trackway then veers off towards um, Puddle Hill and what's now Houghton Pit. Because of course Puddle Hill was an ancient settlement as well. And there was a track. I don't know if it's the same track that I've just been following, but a track certainly leads off from here to that old ancient site. I think that's enough of all that now, don't you? It's been a long old walk. God knows how long this video is going to be. I have not even talked about much. Right, I'll see you all soon. <laughs>